In this video, I am going to explain anatomy of hamstrings. Hamstrings is on back side of thigh. There are three muscles. Well, actually, you can say four muscles. I'm going to explain its name and location first. This one is biceps femoris. Biceps femoris. This one is semi-tendinosis. Semi-tendinosis. And this one is semi-membranosus. Semi-membranosus. Biceps femoris. Bi means two. Seps means head. In anatomy uh, terminology, head means fiber. So, by seps, two fibers. This one is long head. And deep to long head, there is short head. That is why I said maybe you can say there are four muscles in hamstrings. Mainly it's three, but if you add short head of biceps femoris, there are four fibers. Okay? Biceps femoris is on lateral part. Semitendinosus and semimembranosus are on lateral part. I am going to explain its origin and insertion first. Okay, this is closer view. This is ischial tuberosity. All three muscles attach on ischial tuberosity. Okay, here. And biceps femoris and Semitendinosis attaches to this ligament. What is it? This is sacrotuberous ligament. Sacrotuberous ligament. Biceps and semitendinosis attaches to this ligament. This is very, very important to know. Why? Because there is myofascial connection from hamstrings, sacrotibus ligaments to sacrum and spines. This myofascial connection is very famous in nowadays, okay? But if you understand hamstrings attaches to sacrotibus ligament, you can understand this myofascial connection more clearly. Okay, because you now understand this connection anatomically. Okay, general origin of hamstrings is ischial tuberosity. Biceps and semitendinosus attaches to sacrotuberous ligament as well. However, do you remember there is one more fiber in hamstrings that is short head of biceps femoris. That does not attach to ischial tuberosity. Where is it? Now this is first picture. Remember, short head of biceps is deep to long head. Short head originates from femur. Femur, okay? So other three fibers attach to ischial tuberosity. Short head of biceps originates from femur. This is different. Okay, now let me explain its insertion. Okay, this is closer view of knee joint. This is lateral side, which is biceps femoris. Where does biceps femoris attach to? It's here. This is head of fibula. Head of fibula. Long head and short head originate from different place. 
but they both insert to head of fibula. Simple enough, right? Let's go to semitendinosus. Semitendinosus attaches to medial part and anterior part of tibia, that is pes anserinus. Pes anserinus is on tibia. That's it. Biceps femoris, head of fibula. Semitendinosus, pes anserinus. Simple enough, right? But here is the thing, semimembranosus inserts to so many places. That means this muscle is very, very important for anatomical connection. Okay, this is semimembranosus. Okay, here is the insertion that attached to medial condyle. Medial medial condyle, but here, okay, easy, but there are many more attachments, let's say this one, this is oblique popliteal ligament, oblique popliteal ligament, this is on back side of knee joint, oblique popliteal ligament. There is tiny muscle parallel to oblique popliteal ligament. This is popliteus. Semimembranosus attaches to fascia of popliteus. Fascia of popliteus. This muscle is also important for knee stability. That sounds very important, right? Medial condyle, oblique popliteal ligament, fascia of popliteus. There's one more attachment, that is medial meniscus. Medial meniscus. You know, meniscus is important tissue. It is like a shock absorbing system of knee. Maybe when semimembranosus gets tight, that can create stress for medial meniscus and that can aggravate knee joint system. Very important relationship. Medial condyle, oblique popliteal ligament, fascia of popliteus, and medial meniscus. You know, semimembranosus is very, very important for knee stability. Of course, for knee mobility. Now, let me explain function of hamstrings. The most famous function of hamstrings is knee flexion. Knee flexion because they all on back side of thigh and that cross knee joint. Then they do knee flexion. Okay, very powerful knee flexor. And these guys can rotate knee joint. Biceps femoris can do external rotation. External rotation. Semitendinosus and semimembranosus can do internal rotation. Internal rotation. It's simple because biceps is on lateral part, lateral side. Semimembranosus and semitendinosus are on medial part. That's why biceps does external rotation. Semimembranosus and semitendinosus do internal rotation. But hamstrings can move hip joint as well. Let's go back to second picture. Okay, do you remember hamstrings mainly originate from ischial tuberosity? So that means they cross hip joint. That means they move hip joint. What kind of movement? That's hip extension. You know, hamstrings is important for running. 
walking, sprinting, that kind of movement. These guys are so important for running and sprinting. Okay, simple enough. Extension. Plus, it can do adduction. Adduction, okay? This is not very well known, but if you do stretching, the split stretching, you feel it. Your hamstrings is stretched in split stretching, okay? Extension and adduction. And one more thing, if you think about it, hamstrings originates from ischial tuberosity. What happens when hamstrings contracts this way? toward knee joint that can move pelvis what kind of movement is that that is posterior tilt posterior tilt this is very important for pelvic mechanics of course hamstrings is important for knee movement knee stability hip movement hip stability also for pelvic movement and stability. This muscle is very important for core and lower extremity. Now at last, I would like to explain relationship with nervous tissue. You now see yellow tissue. What is it? This is sciatic nerve. Sciatic nerve. This is the biggest nerve in peripheral nervous system. That's from sacrum and it goes to deep to hamstrings. Deep to hamstrings. That means when hamstrings get tight or ruptured, that can affect sciatic nerve. What happens when sciatic nerve is aggravated? That can create numbness, pain, or muscular dysfunction related to sciatic nerve. By the way, sciatic nerve has many relationships with many muscles, such as piriformis. Yep, this area is important as well. However, I am talking about hamstrings today, so I would like to focus on this part. Sciatic nerve has relationship with hamstrings around the posterior part of thigh. When hamstrings get dysfunction, that affects sciatic nerve. This is very, very important. When sciatic nerve is aggravated, that can inhibit flexibility and function of hamstrings. In this video, I explained basic anatomy of hamstrings. I explained its origin, insertion, function, and relationship with nervous tissue. If you liked today's video, please hit the like button comment and subscribe. See you next video.